Oh, do I have a trip down memory lane for you guys. This isn't only me because I know a lot of y'all use some of these products and loved them too, but I was in my Pinterest boards, whatever, trying to find an old recipe I was looking for. And I came across a whole Pinterest board that I had dedicated to my personal beauty and makeup favorites back in 2015. And I wanna say probably started the board in like 2012, 2013. Cause I remember getting Pinterest when I got married and that's when I got married, 2013. So when I came across that board, I was like, this is fun, okay? I wanna talk about these products because I know I'm not the only one that loved some of these. I know some of you loved them as well. And I wanna talk about like, would we still like these products as much as if we had them now? Or have we graduated since then? Have products improved a lot? And I think some of them have. Just taking a quick peek at it. I haven't gone through everything yet. So this is gonna be like a total reaction, reacting videos, cause it's been a while since I revisited these. Obviously they're in my head buried somewhere, but it's nice to have a pin board saying, hey, these are the products that I loved. And uh, let me know if I name any of them that you loved too. And I'm ready to dive in. So make sure you subscribe before we get going. And if you are subscribed, make sure your bell notification is tapped on. You can follow me over on Instagram and TikTok at Ashley Alex if you want. And I'm ready to go. So let's go, boo. boo. My beauty favorite. Should I start at the very bottom? Because that's like the oldest. Sure. First one is Saint Tropez Self Tan Dark Bronzing Mousse. They still make this, obviously. It's still around. I would still buy it, but I've fallen in more in love with the Loving Tan Two Hour Express Mousse. And even Saint Tropez had an Express, I believe. But this was my first love. That was the one that I was like, mm, it's so good. It almost has like a green tint to it, so it doesn't get orange on you. So I do still like that one. But if it was between that and the Loving Tan, I would pick the Loving Tan any day because it lasts a little bit longer it's a little bit easier to use but they're very similar just something about the loving tan i like more maybe because it's a little less green okay these two face products <gasps> This is gonna be like a little nostalgia, a little trip down, down memory lane right here. Tell me who had this. Okay, I feel like I was the only one that loved this. The Too Faced Primed and Poreless Bronze Tint because I would use my bronzer on my body and I would need a little bit on my face because I wouldn't tan my face or when I would, it doesn't last as long because like exfoliators that I use and stuff. The Primed and Poreless Bronze Tint was like the perfect way to be able to deepen up your foundation without having to buy a whole nother foundation. You know, it was more flexible in that way and it wasn't bronzy in the like shimmer aspect and it had that pore filling capability. So I thought this was a really good product. I stopped buying it because like I just stopped tanning so much, but they discontinued it shortly thereafter. But I really liked that. I think the first time I tried this primer, it was in a Too Faced bronzing palette. Man, remember when Too Faced used to be innovative? Oh my goodness. Back in the day, there was this cute little bronzy palette that was very like 1950s looking and it had a little mini of this bronze tint. And then I ended up buying a couple full sizes like going through them because again, it was a great way to add a little bit of depth to your base without having to buy a deeper foundation or mixing foundations. It was it was beautiful, I loved it. Or you can even wear it by itself, you know, but I wouldn't, I was all makeup all the time. <laughs> Anyways, Too Faced Royal Oil. I also liked this, they discontinued this, it smelled so good. I really liked this one because it didn't transfer like a lot of bronze tints do. And I gotta tell you, every bronze tint that I've tried ever since that one transfers on everything. The Loving Tan Bronze Tint, that transfers, don't do it. It's beautiful, it also has like a silver tint to it. So again, less orange, but it transfers on everything. So I really liked that Royal Oil, it smelled amazing. It was very, had like a very oily feel. So like if you had oily skin, you probably wouldn't have loved it, but I loved it. Now, let's talk about this one. This is one that I am mad, that the brand doesn't even exist anymore. Can't find it, it is gone. And the way it was so, hyped up just i don't want to i don't know about like the beauty space back then but just in like average consumers like we sold these lip glosses like crazy sephora at one point sold them and they were so good the lip fusion all the lip glosses all of them but specifically the xl i loved that lip plumper i'm a lip plumper junkie over here okay let me just say that right now i love my lip plumpers but the xl was a uh, love it was expensive and maybe that's why like it didn't last because it was like 55 dollars and back then too like inflation it would be like a hundred dollars now that's crazy but 55 dollars for that i could wear it overnight so that was nice but Too faced did come out with one the lip injection extreme that you can wear overnight and it's kind of a very similar 
formula in a way. It's almost not as as intense as the regular lip injection, but the XL, I just, I loved everything about it, honestly. And the, the container was so sleek and beautiful. And with that said, I loved everything every every lip product I tried from Lip Fusion. I loved, they had these pigmented glosses, infatuations. Those were amazing. Every lip gloss I had, I would say that's closest to buxom actually, their lip glosses, except, no, yeah, yeah, that, yeah, okay. So have things evolved? Maybe I would have to like, try it again to see what if I don't like it as much as I like my buxom lip glosses, because I love those, the lip polishes, the lip plumps, hang on. It's a dupe. I would say Buxom is a dupe for the Lip Fusion line because they have their lip creams. The lip cream is a little bit of a different formula, but it's kind of similar. Okay, I can like talk myself down of like missing that. I think that the Buxom came through and Too Faced. Between Buxom and Too Faced, we can replace that. And maybe that's what happened. These bigger brands just like came swooping in, you know? Paracone, I have a bunch on here. I used to use Paracone when um, I was working at a beauty boutique that sold it. Now I use Jan Marini exclusively and I love it and I'm never turning back. And that's why you don't see me talk about a lot of skincare on here other than the Jan Marini line that I use because I found what works for me. I love it. I want to share everybody, share it with everybody. Everybody, and I get it from my esthetician, so it's like top quality grade product. Love it. They the Rodiel. This is a skincare line that started making makeup. The BB Venom Skin Tint. I had it pinned on here, and I honestly don't know why because I think I got one batch that was amazing, like it was great and beautiful, and then at, then thereafter, any repeat amounts that I got, or maybe just if it sat too long, it got like coagulated and it spit and it had like little beads in there that would just, it was a, it was a hot mess. So, um, no, didn't like that. The by I, I still have this. This is, this is the, uh, bionic bio, bio ionic power light blow dryer. I pinned this cause I loved it. And you know what? Here we are at least seven years later and it's still going strong. Think that is black now. They have the same blow dryer, but it is black. I had the white one and I honestly, I bought that for the salon. So that might even be 10 years old and it is still going strong. And it used to be in the salon and I used to use it on clients. And now it's just, you know, not daily use. I barely blow dry my hair now, but I used to blow dry it all the time. My husband blow dries his hair with it. So it is getting, it's getting a lot of use. So I guess I would say I would recommend that for a blow dryer. This is Makeup Forever products. I used to use this in my kit. They're not cruelty free. So I stopped using them. The high definition powder I did swear by. I think we've evolved since then. It was like a microfine powder. I just think that there's better ones now. Although it was so nice. I don't know. I did really like the foundation, but again, I think what we've, we've grown since then. Again, I don't even think they make this foundation anymore. And if they do, they reformulated it because I haven't seen that bottle around in years. And <laughs> I think it's gone. Too Faced the Lip Creams. I had this shade Naked Dolly and it's really the shade that I loved. The formula was almost too creamy and I'm dry. I'm a dry girl. I got dry lips. I am a dry person. I got dry humor. I'm dry. But this lipstick was almost too thick that it wouldn't even like, like absorb into your skin. And when it moisturized, it would just kind of sit there almost, I don't want to say like a film, but it was just like, it would just sit there and it would just like mush around. And maybe I would use too much of it. I don't know, but it just wasn't it. No, that's what it is. It would kind of feel like a film, like a, like a saran wrap film on your lips. The shade was beautiful. Loved that. These lip liners from Too Faced though, I did like, I have a lot of Too Faced in here because they were big at the time. I mean, not that no, they're, you know, pe people know their household name now, but they're just not creating the it products anymore. The lip liners though, I really liked those. I was pretty mad when they discontinued them. Really, they just needed to expand the range because they only had four shades. I think they ended up with five. They had a berry shade they added. That's it. But the nude shades were perfect. My perfect shade, they were a twist up and they went on so creamy, but they lasted. I haven't tried any of their newer lip liners that they've done since they've come up with, but that like, why change? I don't understand why they would remove a basic like that. I mean, unless like they were having manufacturing problems or whatever ingredient changes, but it was a good lip liner. Let me know if you use that. Did you like it as much as I did? Cause I thought it was good. My lash pops off. Let me know because I'm using a new lash glue and sometimes they need to like sit a little bit and marinate before they really start sticking. You know, it was kind of watery when I opened it. But anyways, the Clarisonic. Oh, a moment of silence for our Clarisonic. <laughs> if you didn't know, Clarisonic went out of business like two years ago. Oh, this is crazy. Uh, I loved my Clarisonic. I have like one of my original videos here on YouTube was my Clarisonic story of how 
the Clarisonic dislodged a hardened keratin protein from my face that I didn't know what it was. I thought it was like a mole and I was like freaking out. <laughs> it is it is like a bad rusty looking video, okay? I look like I filmed on a toaster, right? That's the saying, but it is what it is. And uh, if you wanna hear that story, go check it out. If I remember, I'll link it down in the description box so you could check that there. But I loved my Clarisonic. I used it for years, but I did stop using it towards the end there. And, um, you know, it was just sad to see it go, but I wasn't really using it anymore. But I know a lot of people were. And I don't really know if anybody came out with dupes. I know that they lost their, I did a video about them going to business too. I know that they lost their patent and people were able to then use the same technology that they had patented. So I, maybe that was a problem. I know we started seeing things in TJ Maxx, like knockoffs of it. And that's sad. That is sad. Like, why Why did they lose their patent? I think that kind of sucks. If they came out with the technology, you know. This is like, this is like a throwback to 2006, okay? Uh, the Lime Crime shade, oh, I loved this lip, lip uh, lipstick. The Lime Crime shade in Coquette. I still don't know to this day if I'm saying it right. Coquette, Croquette, but it's not Croquet, Coquette. Anyways, Loved that shade and looking at this picture, oh, that was like concealer lipstick days, like 2004 days, maybe even earlier when we used to just put concealer and gloss on our lips. And here I was in 2000 and I think this was 13, buying a lipstick that looked just like it. And I probably wore it all the time and loved it. Did it look that nude on me? I don't remember. I feel like it had a little bit more color, but honestly, probably not. <laughs> I didn't take a lot of pictures of my makeup that back in the day. Maybe if I have one, I'll put it up. But, um, you know, I wasn't photographing my makeup as much as I am now. Let me know if you had that one. Did you love it as much as I did? Was it as light in tone as this picture is showing? The Makeup Forever HD blushes. I did really like these blushes. Again, Makeup Forever isn't cruelty free though, but I don't know why they haven't come back out with it. Seeing that cream and liquid type blushes are so popular. Those things stayed all day. I stocked my kit with those because they were like waterproof. So if you were crying and you're emotional and you ran, you wouldn't have a line down your blush. Like it wouldn't disappear. So I layered with that product and it was really good. This is a sad moment for Smashbox <laughs> because Smashbox, Poor little brand. Smashbox is innovative, but just nobody pays attention to them. They're always too early to trends, or they used to be. I don't know about anymore because I also stopped paying attention to them. They used to be like two, like a year or two ahead of the trends, like so much so that they would discontinue products and the trend would come and then the product wouldn't be there. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? If you're familiar with Smashbox, you know. So why I say this is because the Smashbox contour kit I loved. I had my own. I restocked my kit several times using it. It was like the only contour kit of the day. And I'm talking like 2010, like when I first started using this product. And it was the the one it had the perfect tone for contour they had two different skin to skin tone levels and it was beautiful the all the shades just worked beautifully you can bronze a little bit with that warmer shade and then the lighter shade was the perfect like matte highlighter it came with a angled brush that i think i still have i think i still have it hang on oh my goodness yes i do Look at that. Oh, and it matches me. Look at it. It matches me. We're twins. I still have it. I had so many of these because I bought repeats of that so many times until they discontinued it. And I'm like, what do I do? I mean, I had enough that I was fine. I know other brands came out with contour kits, but this one was like so accessible. It was easy to get. And then Anastasia Beverly Hills, ABH, came out with their contour kit and people lost their minds. Like it was the first time they ever saw contour kits. And that just goes back to either advertising, marketing, or maybe because YouTube kicked off then. I mean, the beauty space really blew up around 2015, 2016. So, <laughs> Poor Smashbox, because I worked at the beauty boutique that carried Smashbox. They discontinued it, and one year later, I want to say, is when the contour kits blew up. It was so not funny. It's funny, like sad, not funny, haha. -ha. And then they eventually brought it back, but by the time they brought it back, I feel like so many brands were making it that it was just like, oh, okay. So that's why I say poor Smashbox, because I feel like I've seen that happen with several of their products before, you know, that they have it, that they have to discontinue it, and then finally the thing blows up, and then, then they have to rebring it back, and it's already too late. So there's that. Let me know if you had it. This is such a long list. Who knows? I might need to do a part two, but 
but let's keep going for now. The Lime Crime eyeshadow. Oh, I loved this. I stopped using Lime Crime back when it was like the whole Lime Crime crimes, the crimes of lime back in the day when they had a ton of scandals. And then we found out the owner is not such a good person. So I stopped using them. And now I don't think she's a part of the company at all. I got to research a little bit more, but I think I'm safe to start using them again. But I just haven't gotten around to it to looking it up that much because nothing ever like sparks my interest anymore with Lime Crime either. They were so, again, so innovative. Maybe that's because they, you know, they lost the owner, but that's okay because the owner was not good. So uh, the eyeshadow primer though, I loved. I thought that was a really good eyeshadow primer. They did change it and then I stopped buying it because it was just not the same, but that eyeshadow, I use that on all my clients too. Again, long waterproof, great. It was really good. Then we came out with other, there's lots of other brands now. Again, they were like one of the first eyeshadow primers that I can remember. So I think we have we have other ones. I don't think I miss it. No, I don't miss it. Like I, if it came out again, I don't, I don't think I would buy it unless I was just curious. <laughs> again, more makeup forever. Just a lot of waterproof, strong, full coverage type of products for my makeup kit. I did the aqua brow I had on here. And again, it was waterproof. It was a liquid brow. Not really any brands have like a liquid brow that you put on and you dip and then you do it. Dip brow eventually came out and that was, so much easier to use. So I went with that one just as almost just as waterproof. The Makeup Forever full coverage. Again, I would choose Shape Tape any day over this one. It was very thick. It was long lasting, but it was so thick to work with, but it was like the most full coverage product I could get at the time. Beauty Blender. Oh my goodness. Look, I pinned a Beauty Blender. I wish it had dates on when I pinned these like exactly, but I was like pretty, I got introduced to Beauty Blender like pretty early on because again, the Beauty Boutique I worked at sold them. Them. And I remember them showing me and I'm just like, it's a sponge. And it's I think right then it was like $20. And I'm just like, how? How is it that good? It's a sponge. And I'm like thinking like triangle sponges, like we don't, we're not using those anymore. We used to use those back with our, you know, mousse whips from Maybelline back in the day and not matching and not blending. How could it be that good? And then I used it and I was like, okay, okay, I get it. I do get it. And then the more I used it with certain foundations, I did like it and I understood the hype and I was like, okay, it still seemed a little unreasonable for $20, but a business got to make money and they were indie at the time, they were paving the way. And then of course, eventually everybody dupes them. They're still around though, they're still around, but I like my Shop Miss A AOA Studio. I actually have a new pack. Shop Miss A AOA Studio Paw Paw Wonder Blender, super soft edition. I can get a six pack on Amazon for $10. I just got these ones on sale for $7 during cyber week, but these are amazing. I like them better than the Beauty Blender, honestly, because the Beauty Blender almost kind of can like leave a weird texturing on my skin. These ones don't, they're softer, they're smoother. I've done side-by-side -side comparison videos of that too. I got videos for everything. So you can see that if you just search on my channel, you know, Beauty Blender, dupe, whatever. And I like these better. So we've come a long way since then too. You can still get the Beauty Blender obviously, but you don't have to spend the money on that, you know. All oh, Alicious, back when Alicious was totally different packaging. Okay, that's so cute. I love Alicious. I fell in love with them back then. I still get my Alicious and I get them from, actually I'm wearing her shirt today, Two Beauties Eureka. And that is my best friend. She's my esthetician. She's who I get my Gian Marini skincare from. And I also get my Lalicious skincare from. This was like original packaging when they were first starting out. Love their, they call it the body butters now. They used to call them, no, no. No, they're the body butters. Uh, that's the coconut, the sugar scrub. I love their sugar scrub and their body butters. The packaging is much more luxe looking now, very spa-like, very boutique, really pretty Tahitian flower. And the formulas didn't change from what I felt. I don't know, I never looked at the ingredients, but it always felt the same. The scent was the same. It was just a packaging that changed, which I appreciated because I love that brand so much. Um, <laughs> Abercrombie ate perfume. Anybody remember that? Okay. I still love that scent. I don't buy it anymore, but I have a bottle from, I think it was my wedding was the last time I bought it and the perfume stays fine. That was my wedding perfume. <laughs> Eight. Oh, even though my husband doesn't love it that much. Like he's, it's, it's good, but it's not his favorite perfumes on me. I just, I loved it so much. So that was a me moment for sure. Uh, I used that since I worked at Abercrombie because back in the day I worked at Abercrombie for a little while, right out of high school. Oh, I loved that scent. That and Fierce, man. That and Fierce. People gave those a bad rap. I liked those smells. It reminded me of shopping and needing to buy stuff. Too Faced Candle Lit Glow. Again, Too Faced. Too Faced 
was one of the first to start coming out with highlighters, I felt like, because back in the day, NARS. NARS was my first highlighter that I bought in, honestly, like 2007, 2008, Albatross. It was such a light sheen. It was beautiful. We've come a long way since then, though. It was almost kind of like a little too, eh, that Too Faced came out with this candlelight glow one. I loved it because you could use one side or the other, or you could swirl it all together. Again, very innovative for them. Remember when Too Faced was like known for their bronzers? I mean, and just innovation in general. Remember when Too Faced was known for being good? Oh my goodness. I know, they still have some good stuff. I still love their lip glosses, but they seriously, they used to knock it out of the park with every launch. And was that because not everybody was doing it? You know, they were more the only ones, not the only ones. There are a few brands out there, but now the market's so saturated. Is that what it is? I don't know, but I just feel like they used to have good quality products. I feel like even now, if we use some of these products Too Faced used to make, we would still be like, wow, that's good. You know, like that highlighter, that was beautiful. It was good. I know everybody makes highlighters now though, but just quality wise, quality, I don't know. Uh, Chocolate Soleil, I feel like every time they redo it, it almost gets worse. Like why change it? It was good already. And then they came out with, the, when they came out with this packaging, the Chocolate Soleil, that packaging, and like those coins, they almost look like poker chips, like giant poker chips. And then they had the three different shades. That was good. And then they had the fun different bronzer and highlighter mix. Like this one was called, I had this one, I liked it. It doesn't say, I don't remember what it was, Snow Bunny? Was that Snow Bunny? They had Sun Bunny, like they had all those fun ones. Those were so good. I liked almost all of them, but a couple did look a little too orange on me. Otherwise though, like I feel like everybody could find one that they would like. I don't know why they had to, take something away that everybody liked weird especially when they were hot stuff although they, they it's almost like they kept trying they keep trying to recreate that but in new packaging to try to make it more exciting when really they would probably just sell fine if they just kept does, that, does anybody else miss them does anybody else miss the old bronzers and highlighters from them and blushes and interestingness because i obviously very obviously do Lip, what lipstick is this lime crime suede berry matte again they were one of the one of the like first groups to put out the liquid lipsticks the matte liquid lipsticks i never got around to trying this one no i don't like i did no i don't know if i did i bought one for my best friend Liz, Two Beauties Rika, and I know she really liked it, but I don't think I got one. Oh no, you know what was one of the first liquid lipsticks? Ugh. Now looking back, it would not hold a candle to formulas now, but back then it was all we got, baby, and that was the OC Lip Tars. Oh my goodness, OC Lip Tars. A moment of silence for them too. A lot of discontinued brands that are no more. Wow, I wasn't expecting that. The OC Lip Tars were so runny and would bleed into our lip lines and we would just be like, this is fabulous, baby, this is great because it was just fun and they had so many fun colors. I had the shade Pool Boy, that was super fun, okay? I loved doing it and having the creativity of it, but was it long wearing? Absolutely not. Like, wouldn't it even last an hour without feathering into your lip lines? And even if you don't have lip lines, I didn't, I, I was like 20 at the time and it still, maybe I was 22. Nonetheless, it still would, it would just migrate. That's the problem. The product would migrate instead of going out of business. Although I think that was, that's a whole nother video. I think Sephora kind of ruined them from what I heard. I have eyeshadow all over my hand. No, it's marker. Cause I was drawing with my toddler and she colored on my hand. But anyways, why didn't they just re- formulate their lip products because by the time they went out of business, so many liquid lips were on the market that they could have made it long wearing because I think that was their downfall. I think a lot of people, a lot of us bought a few of their stuff and then would just not buy anymore. Like buy it once and then be like, oh, not again because you know, it just wouldn't last. And the product itself wouldn't last very long. You'd get all separate and weird. Oh, here's the NARS Albatross that I mentioned a minute ago. The NARS Albatross highlighter that was just only one at the time. I feel like we've moved past that. I wonder if they still make it. NARS isn't cruelty free, so don't buy them. But now we're getting to Too Faced a Better Than Sex Mascara. Again, that was one of my favorites for a long time, for a long, long time since then until I tried the CoverGirl Exhibitionist a few years ago when they came out with that. Total dupe, and I almost like it better. I do like it better. I stopped buying the Too Faced Better Than Sex because I like the Exhibitionist better. It curls better and it lifts my lash a little bit better. Okay, I actually, there's a lot left. There's a lot left. That was only half of my 
pinned favorites. So if you don't mind, I'm gonna do a part two of this. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on that or, or turn on your notification bells in case they aren't yet. Make sure all notifications are tapped on because I gotta split this up into two videos. <laughs> I didn't realize there were that much and that much to talk about. But that was a fun little trip down memory lane. Thank you so much for joining me. I'm really curious to find out what were some of your favorite beauty products, if you can remember like back then, were any of them the ones that I listed? I feel like a lot of people loved Too Faced back then. And that was uh, their heyday, their heyday. Even before that, they had some stuff that I remember that was like really fun and funky, but uh, that's another separate video. You know, I got a lot of videos ideas today going through my head, but that is that. Thank you so much for stopping by and hanging out with me while I talked about my favorites and I will see you next time. My old favorites, my old ones, not anymore. But anyways, I'll see you next time. Bye.